hello guys and welcome back to another video and today we have a device called redmi 14c a technician brought this device to me and he told me that he has replaced several screens and there is no display at all on the screen there's no light there's no display all right so that's why he brought it to me so that i can help him out now i'm going to show you step by step on now i'm going to troubleshoot this this is going to be a different troubleshooting from the ones you know so if you are patient enough you're going to learn a lot from this video okay if you're interested in our online class please dm us on the numbers on the screen and we're going to help you become a better technician let's go right into the video all right now um on some phones okay when the backlight is not working it will not display at all it will not display at all because of the type of the screen I get when I'm saying there are some screens that is going to show um, uh, picture in the background, but the light will not be there. But this particular one, the screen is not even showing anything. So I don't know if it's a backlight or if it's a display problem. But let's see how we are going to troubleshoot this. So the first thing you see me doing is physical inspection. Let's go straight to the schematic diagram and let's take it one step at a time. Now, the first thing we are going to examine is the light section. Okay light section let's go to the light section from the schematic diagram if you want to know more about how to use this schematic diagram please join our online training okay and we're going to uh, teach you the basic uh, uh, use of a schematic diagram to troubleshoot a mobile phone problems all right this is the light section all right it has the coil it has um light ic and all that so i'm focusing on the anode side and the um the anode the cathode and the cabc line these are the three lines responsible for light on your screen if you want to know more about this join our online training now i'm going to take readings on my multimeter red probe on ground and black probe to take reading and 0.5 reading on the anode line is giving a proper reading all right it's giving a proper let me check the cabc line those are two important lines that usually have issues the cbc line is also reading properly all right now if you have not hit the like button yes please make sure you hit the like button now and subscribe to this channel for more amazing tips and tricks now let's check the vph uh, current if it's really getting to the fpc okay now plugging my battery in i'm i'm getting 3.7 volts that means the vph is steady all right that means the vph is steady now the next thing i'm going to do is to um do a code testing i'm going to put it on diode mode to read if there is any short uh shorted component capacitor all right to the ground so i'm going to take reading randomly on the capacitors around here and that's what you're seeing me doing right now all right if you're interested in our online training if you want to learn about deep troubleshooting please join our line training we are going to teach you from the scratch level to the advanced level okay now there's no short here so the next point of action is for me to go to the display section the display section which involves display ic and some other components around it so this is the lines of um the display section we have capacitors here connecting to the ic and this one also is connecting to the ic all right so um let's take readings on these capacitors and let's see if the display section is also okay or if it's not okay all right and i'm going to be taking um the reading right now and this is giving good reading all right good reading over there all right this one is also reading well okay on this particular cap if i if, if i reverse the probe it's going to give me a good reading so the cap is good all right so i'm um, taking reading randomly on some other capacitors as well because i'm so curious i can see that all these sections are reading properly none of the capacitors are shorted to ground none of the capacitors are shorted to ground so um what is the next thing to do if you have not hit the like button yet please make sure you hit the like button now all these capacitors you are seeing around this ic they are one way or another connected to that uh, display IC. Look at this capacitor right here. It's, I, I want to check if it's really connected to the 
to the um to the display ic because in the schematic diagram there is no guidelines showing that the ic is connected to that capacitor but i'm going to use my schematic diagram to fish this capacitor out and that's what you can see right on my screen all right now um this is the capacitor right here that's c uh c2915 c2915 and it's connected to this display ic and is we have c fly one and c fly two that means this capacitor is a flying capacitor you know sometimes we have we have boot capacitors and now we have flying capacitors so this is fly capacitor right here and it's connected to the ic look at the bitmap is showing me that it's connected to the ic so let's examine this guy let's examine this guy okay let's see if he's going to give us a good reading for from our multimeters you can see both legs are connected to the ic both legs are connected to the ic none of the legs is connected to gnd this is the capacitor right here and we are going to take reading on this capacitor because it is connected to that display ic all right now let's go if you have not liked the video yet please hit the like button and subscribe okay if you are interested in our online class if you want to know more about troubleshooting details you can join our online training or you come for physical training and we are going to do our best to teach you right to give you best of uh, mobile troubleshooting now i'm reading to the ground and the capacitor is not short to the ground the fly capacitor is not shorting to the ground that's one side and the other side as well let's take a reading 0.4 hmm. it's not shorting to ground as well could this capacitor be good now let's take the reading on the capacitor alone on the capacitor alone let's take another reading on that capacitor alone all right let's see the reading is going to give us on our multimeter still on diode mode all right if you're interested in our online training don't forget to uh, dm us and please don't dm me for solutions dm me if you really want to learn if you really want to grow in mobile phone repairs all right so i'm going to read both sides of the capacitor Mmm, something is fishy. Look at that. Hold on. 0 0.024. That is a very bad reading for this capacitor. That is why it is very important as a technician, as a technician, sorry, to know the readings of particular components. This reading is showing that this capacitor is shorting. Could it be IC shorting the capacitor? Or could it be the capacitor shorting the IC? We are going to know right now. Now, I've removed the capacitor out from the PCB. All right. The next thing for us now is to read this capacitor independently. All right. Reading it separately from, you know, off the board. Now, multimeter or diode mode. And I'm going to take reading of this capacitor wow <laughs> wow you see that the capacitor is really bad mm? take a closer look take a closer look now take note of the value is 4.7 microfarad 10 volts 10 percent so we need to look for exact same capacitor you know to replace um, that capacitor that was shorting all right now this is the new capacitor I got and it's it's going to work perfectly for this. Okay. Now let me use my multimeter to show you guys that it is not the same capacitor I removed. So I'm going to test the capacitor I removed and I'm going to test the capacitor I'm about to put again. Now let me start from the capacitor I want to replace with. All right. You see, it's not giving us any reading. This is how a capacitor should read. Look at the one that we, we took out, 0.023. This capacitor is really, really, really bad. Okay, now let's replace um, that. Let's replace with a good capacitor. If you don't understand all these things I'm talking about, we have good, you know, training program for you. If you want to learn about troubleshooting, 
and you know and f- mobile phone repair join our online training uh, dm us on the numbers on the screen and i've just replaced that capacitor but it is not sitting properly all right because i am not using my microscope now let me use the microscope to adjust the capacitor and make sure it is sitting properly if you are enjoying the video please don't forget to hit the like button share with your technician friends and let let everyone be uh, aware of this type of issue on redmi products okay or on android mobile phones all right now i'm trying to cool the pcb before i put it to test now before we test this please make sure um you you like the video all right share let's go is this going to work or is not let's find out and the phone is working and the phone is working i i bet you some technician will still think this is light issue <laughs> all right but that's where that's why troubleshooting is very very important for every technician to know i'm telling you if you don't know troubleshooting eesh, my brother you are still missing a lot now that's why i've put our training ground for you to learn so join our online training or physical training and you'll be able to know more about this Thank you for watching this video. See you in my next video. Peace.